Welcome back to the GAMSAP podcast. I'm Tom. Uh, it's been a small hiatus, but we're back and I'm here with Christian. Um, so Christian's one of our tutors and was a student as well. So maybe introduce yourself, Christian. Yeah, sure. So um, I uh, I sat the GAMSAT um, three times. I was a student at Fraser's this year. Um, I've, I've uh, completed my undergrad and I'm starting medicine in the new year. Super exciting. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so the, this podcast today, we're going to be talking about GAMSAT scores. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to try and answer all the questions that uh, a student could have, someone who has a set of GAMSAT scores, someone who hasn't done it at all and is just trying to get an idea of where they stand. Um, yeah, we're going to go in deep and really try to explain the whole process. Um, so Christian, you just came off the back of writing um, a long overdue GAMSAT scores article for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a, what was that experience It was a lengthy like? one. Oh, it was awesome. It was, um, you know, it, I guess like trying to understand, um, you know, every university and how, mm. they're, how they're working and seeing this bigger picture of how, you know, GAMSAS and the independent, you know, unis actually working. Yeah. It, was, it was awesome. Trying to like break down the conspiracy basically. That's it. That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really get a clear picture of what, you know, what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think, yeah, you're pretty well placed. Um, I'm a bit crusty and old now, but mm. having gone through it really recently, it probably was at the front of your mind. Yeah, yeah, of course. all the forums and Discord and yeah, whatever yeah, else, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. probably most on it. Um, all right, so so maybe we should talk about the basics first. So um, just in a, in a basic way, how do GAMSAT scores work? Sure, so we, we, with the GAMSAT scores, um, I, obviously we know we've got three different sections. Mm -hmm. We get a score for section one, two, and three. Um, these scores are somehow, you know, converted to a final score that we get from ASA and that being, you know, the, the overall score. Yep, yep. Um, and so, you know, if I, most students would say, I'm, you know, I'm sitting down to do the ASA pink book. Mm -hmm. um, so how do my scores convert to overall scores? Do yeah. they convert? How does it work? Yeah, sure. So it's obviously a bit challenging because the score that we get for each section aren't exactly a percentile. Yep. So um, they're not a percentile and they're not also a score out of the total. So it's not, you know, you know, I scored 60 in section three. I got 60 out of 110. It's not like that either. There's, yeah. you know, we've got a number of issues such as, you know, questions being, you know, higher indicators based off, you know, yeah. various mathematical, you know, reasons for that. And so um, it's, it's, yeah. it's more of, of an indicator of how you've placed in comparison with every other year that's sat the game set. Yeah, so that's really important. So, so the first thing I guess is that the score that you get, the overall score, is a comparison amongst your peers. Mm. Um, so that means that anything anything where you're going to try and compare the yeah percentage that you get, so let's say if I got 70% on section three and you got 75% on section three, if we're just sort of doing practice at home, it's quite hard for us to know, like especially when we're not working together, what that 70% is. If we had all the data of all the students that were sitting the test, mm. it becomes quite easy because you yeah. can... Um, you know, abstract out your percentile and then use the graphs from previously published um, GAMSATs and see roughly where you line up. Because um, for those who haven't seen the graphs and there'll be some as part of our article, um, you, they do publish a distribution of scores. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, you know, percentile rank associated with a given overall score. Yeah, yep, yep. of And know, really important that the percentile is only for that sitting as well. So, you yep. know, you, you get you get a, a, a different distribution based off, you know, the, the specific cohort that is sitting within that given, within that yeah. given sitting. And it does, it, those, um, the diff, diff changing percentiles do make sense. So, you know, um, again, using the analogy of you and I, let's say I sat um, March 2019, for whatever reason, it was a really easy test and the cohort wasn't particularly sharp. Um, yeah, yeah. And if I rank really highly in that group, let's say we've got a 95th percentile then you sat september 2018 it was the opposite it was a really hard test the cohort were all really smart and you ranked 90th percentile mm -hmm. is my 95th percentile beating you know all high school grads better than your 90th percentile beating all the smartest kids yeah yeah, yeah big fish in you know yeah. little pond <laughs> exactly yeah, yeah. yeah um so it's it's hard like the, the answer is no that mm. yours is a probably better mm, mm. and so you see that in the scores the 90th percentile will be um will be correlated in a sit where there's lots of smarter students mm. the 90th percentile will be correlated with a higher score yeah than my yep. 95th percentile yeah, yeah, yeah. um so there are a bunch of different things to go into mm. and we will go into it um but 
I guess we've explained relatively well how, how scores work. Mm-hmm. So what about um, often, so when I apply for a university, what am I applying with? How do the sections work together? Yeah, sure. So um, for, for the universe, so obviously we're talking um, strictly postgrad. Um, the universities that aren't uh, Notre Dame and University of Wollongong, we're only looking at GPA and GAMSAT uh, trying to get an interview. Mm. What does sort of differ between these universities is whether, the, uh, for example, the GPA is a, is a cutoff or whether it contributes to whether we're actually going to get in. And you know, one example mm. is University of Sydney where you know the cutoff is more or less five. Um, if yeah. you make that five, then all we're going to be looking at is the GAMSAT and that's uh-huh. going to determine whether we you know get... Get, yeah. get an interview offer or not um but for you know university of notre dame and wollongong we have the gpa we have the gamsat we also have the portfolio okay yep no that makes sense um so yeah i guess it's it depends a lot on the school so mm. whenever you're um, using any of our calculators or um, thinking about what score you need um you should th- be thinking sort of one university at a time effectively mm-hmm. yeah so you know each university has its own rules so if you're using a GPA calculator, you want to calculate GPA for that university. Which is a task in itself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so um, many different ways. Every university having its own rules and yeah, yeah, changing, changing, you know, whether rural contributes to the GPA directly or... Like all these different masters. And yeah, like yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. So I guess using some of the data from our mock exams... Mm-hmm. Um, I think we can give students, some students a rough idea of like what sort of raw scores they need on mm-hmm. section one and section three. Yep, yep. Again, this is all, you know, plus or minus 5% yeah. in either direction. But um, but still like to have a sense of, okay, I'm sitting down to do section one, you know, what's like the line in the sand of how high I should score. Um, so I know there were graphs, there are graphs in the article, but mm. do you remember roughly sort of how they work together? Yeah, I think section one, um, it was, so obviously out of 75, it was somewhere between, you know, 35 to 40 is like a really amazing score for section one, mm. which is really, um, you know, confronting when you first hear that. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, you know, I, I, you know, I'm aiming for roughly 50%, walk in the park, but <laughs> it's actually really challenging. Yeah, I think it's, it's to, for us, it's to do with our mock exams as well. Like mm. our section one is genuine, generally a little bit harder mm, mm. than the real thing. Um, but you're right. Like I think if students are scoring sort of 40 to 45 out of 75, especially if you're getting above 45, yeah. you're starting to get into um, quite high territory. Like mm-hmm. for most of our mocks, you'd be ranking in you know the 80th percentile mm-hmm. or higher. Um, and then for section three, do you remember how they correlate? Yeah, it was it was very closely related to the score out of out of the entire one ten. Yeah, it was either minus ten or plus ten. I can't remember which yeah. way it was. I think but I've got it here. Yeah, yeah, that'll work. be. So, yeah, so I think it's roughly plus ten. Plus ten. Okay. So if you got fifty out of one hundred and ten, yeah, um, then that would usually correlate to around like a fifty-seven, fifty-eight. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. If you got a seventy out of one hundred and ten, you've that would, it. Yeah, that's quite good. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's it's one of those things. So like the addition sort of reduces as you get yeah, higher. Yeah, yeah. So if you get you know seventy out of one hundred ten, that's kind of close to a seventy. Mm-hmm. If you get eighty out of one hundred ten, it's maybe seventy-five to eighty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you know if you're getting a hundred, you'd, you'd be getting close to 100 out of 110 Mm. Um, and because the scores are more spread in section three there's more i guess it's harder to move up in the percentile rankings yeah whereas with the um section one it's all quite stacked so even Mm. a few marks either way make Mm. a big difference change everything yeah Yeah, exactly um but that hopefully that's helpful for for you guys preparing at home so you know roughly 45 out of 75 section one should be a i guess your goal um, and section three, obviously, the more the better, but start off by trying to get over 60 out of mm-hmm. 110 and go from there. Um, so calculating GPA um, will include the article in the description to the podcast, but Christian did a lot of hard work um, putting together a calculator for all of the different universities. Is there anything special we need to know about using that calculator? Yeah, I guess, um, well, for starters, it's amazing how different the scores can be, the different GPA scores based off, you know, the university. We are yeah. mucking around with it, you know, you and I the other day, and it's like, you know, you're hitting yeah. high six yeah. in one university and, you know, not even six in another. In another and it's yeah, astounding. it makes a big difference. Yeah. It does, yeah, the, the different weightings that are going on. 
But um, the I guess the main thing to focus on when we're using this GPA calculator is it's very much for the very, very standard applicant. Yeah. It's um, it's for the you know a three year undergrad, not you know an accelerated. Um, yeah, or like you know transfer credits. And yeah, units exactly. And yeah, stuff. yeah, it does Double change degrees, a lot. Yeah, 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 which is where obviously the GEMSAS um, calculation <laughs> yeah. comes into it's it. It's a brand new thing. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. So they're charging is it thirty five Australian yeah. dollars, yeah. and you can get your GPA calculated. Yep. I wonder if they spit it out for all the universities. Yeah, it would be interesting. I'm not. I'm not too sure because presu- it's presumably they just use their. They would have to have a calculator of their yeah. own. Yeah, so yeah, they're probably just a master use their one own. that we're trying to exactly. emulate. <laughs> you know, emulate, and then they would just spit out your result. Yeah, um, yeah. But I guess I don't know. Like I know it sucks because there's mm. always more more money being spent in all directions. Mm, it but does. Yeah, if you fall into that bucket where you have any anything that's slightly different mm. um, or challenging to calculate, then it might be worth the money spent. Yeah, for sure. You I know, mean, thirty five dollars for like hours of anxiety about where you stand yeah. is probably worth it. Yeah, and you know, and if you're not, then obviously our calculator is quite up to scratch. It, it takes into um, you know ATSI, it takes into PhD, which is good. Yeah, but there's obviously like they're, they're very vague. The universities they'll put things in there like you know a master's by you know research will contribute. Yeah x amount of something and it's like well what is that yeah you know exactly. what, I mean? yeah. what are the rules exactly? yeah, yeah 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 i do feel like in some of those cases that gemsas is probably sending a list or sending the students to the university mm-hmm. and the university is sort of making a case-by-case case determination yeah, yeah yeah um which is often one of what we find in the master classes and workshops and things like yeah, that yeah yeah um oh speaking of which small plug if yeah. you haven't come to the gamsat master classes you should come to the gamsat master classes they're all running in the next few weeks um, so yeah, come awesome along. Event. We'll yeah. Very good. Christian will be will be there. No, I'll be there at some as well. Um, all right. So this is the big one, and this is mm. where we're going to take some time. So um, let's talk about um, item response theory. Yeah. Um, so there, I guess it's the fundamental underpinning of a lot of aptitude tests. Um, my basic explanation is that you know not every question is worth the same. And item response theory tries to use a number of different factors to weight questions um, in in a, a couple of different ways, which mm-hmm. we'll talk about um, to try to, I guess, as, yeah, completely assess like different cognitive skills and assign weights for different things you're testing. Yeah. That wasn't that clear. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Do you want to try? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It, it, it sounds right. like uh, I think... Um the, the biggest thing for IRT for me is like the, the ability to work out when students are guessing. Mm. And that's just astounding. It's like, you know, the, to be yeah. able to really, really um, work out whether the answers that you're providing are right for the right reasons is, is mind boggling. Yeah. But so, but yeah, the, the weightings, depending on the cognitive skills, obviously every um, option in a multiple choice is curated for a specific reason. And that right yeah. there is an indicator. And so whether you are getting, you know, for example, a pattern of a certain style right, it, it, it is a good indicator of a certain quality that they're looking for. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so what are some of those factors that that you could be weighted for? The 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 easiest ones, I guess, are um, going into the exam. Which one, uh, you know, Acer thinks are going to be difficult for the cohort, and so that will weight, you know, the questions a little bit differently. If we think a certain question might be difficult, for example, where it is in the book or what questions it has followed, yep. um, that that has some sort of a weighting to it. Also, and it's a little bit different, but questions that students actually found difficult. Yeah, and that's different based from, on the results. It's based yeah. on the results, and that's. So, you know, on the actual day, what, what actually changed the weighting and so on. Yep. But um, yeah, and things like, you know, the, the different cognitive styles. Um, you know, like I said, if we have, you know, five questions that are all visual and then one question that's a sea of text, yeah. that's going to be challenging to switch up Especially the, the first one. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that, you know, that that impacts how much that should be worth purely because of its position. Mm. And that's, you know, yep. psychometric tests for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it makes sense. So, yeah, so if the if a question is, you know, shift in mental model or even just flipping from the last question of one um, passage to the mm. first question of the next passage yep. should be weighted slightly. Yep, yep. Um, probably if there's, um, you know, eight questions on a STEM compared to two mm-hmm. questions on a STEM, yep. you know, probably the ones that are questions six, seven, and eight actually weighed a little bit less because mm-hmm. you had a lot of time to understand the stimulus, whereas for... Uh, a stem where you only have a few questions you have less time so yeah, they get yeah. weighted more as well um and also with these weightings it, it can be weighted for different types of skills so you know maybe the one where there's lots of um lots of text for a few few questions their cognitive skill they're assessing there is the ability to process large amounts yeah. of information and so probably behind closed doors they have some 
list of skills that they're trying to assess for and what proportion of the test each of those skills needs mm-hmm. to represent. Mm-hmm. And then that's probably how they construct set, sit down to construct the test. Um, and in terms of these weightings, um, you know, it's easy for everyone to understand like, you know, this question is worth 1.2 or this question is worth 0.8. Mm-hmm. But that's probably not how it actually yeah. works. Um, yeah. More of know, a cumulative, uh, you know, ba- based off you know, a, a number of questions that are testing for the same thing, to what a gr- degree are we grappling with it? Yeah, so if the, and what Christian's saying is like, so for instance, if there's 10 questions that rely on um, like an abstraction of biological reasoning, so yeah. like it's a XYZ system, but it's in a different animal or different environment or something, then over the test, they can look at how you answered all of those types of questions and what the respective weightings of all those mm-hmm. questions were. And if you get them right in a logical way, Mm -hmm. as in you got the easier ones right Mm -hmm. more frequently and the harder ones wrong in the correct kind of distributions, then the IRT can spit out that you are, um, that like it's whatever, you're 60%, you have 60% power (laughs) in this category or skill. Yep, yep. Um, Whereas if you sort of randomly got like hard, difficult questions right and easy questions wrong and it doesn't really make sense, your Mm -hmm. distribution, then the you probably won't get zero, but you'll be punished for like a likelihood of guessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's all maths. It is, it is, and yeah. it, like which is why it makes it so difficult to say. You know, we need X out of yeah. you know seventy five. We need X out of one hundred and ten. So like obviously, it, it it puts into question like how 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 much can we emulate that sort of process? Which is yeah. obviously what we're trying to do. And yeah, I think without mock right. exams yeah, and things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's the other thing. So. Not only is it what number you're getting out of, you know, 110 or 75, mm. it's also are you demonstrating understanding? Have yeah. you actually improved your skills? Yeah, yeah. And I guess it um, it encourages the right type of behavior. You know, mm. there's mm. no golden bullet to defeat the yeah. test. Yeah, yeah. We used to say it on Hack Day as well. Like people would come into um, Hack or now Strategy Day thinking that there'd be some secret strategy that would let them get every question right. Um, but in fact, it's the opposite. You know, you still get rewarded for being strategic and getting through the paper because these weightings, um, like the overall effect of it will still be, if you get more questions right, ultimately, you'll still be um, likely to do better. Better off, yeah. But the same. But that being said, if two people get 70 out of 110, depending on the distribution of their answers, the scores could be quite different. Mm. Um, so it's not about scrounging around for, you know, any any easy mark possible correct it's, it's going yeah. into the i guess exam really respecting what it's what it's yeah. trying to test and you sort of have to just trust the process and like trust that their maths is fair mm-hmm. and that they're equal equally balancing different sits mm-hmm. um and you know ultimately it, it's you don't have any control over the process yeah. um we just try as much as possible to to understand what's going on mm. uh but beyond that i mean yeah you just have to do your best yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's it um all right so that was one of the big deep dives. Yeah. The next one is um, about applications. So, yeah. um, big one. We apply with our GAMSAT and our mm. GPA. Yeah. Now, in previous podcasts, we've spoken a lot about um, problematic, yeah. um, you know, things like the combined score um, from different companies, and also like that really caught on this mm. whole, you know. My combined score is 1.6. I have a friend who is 1.5 and they got in. I don't understand, Mm, blah, 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 blah. The reason is because it it, it is flawed and isn't the way that applications work, which we'll talk about. Um, But how do applications work? (laughs) Cool, yeah. (laughs) All right. So um, to look at, I guess, let's just pick University of Melbourne first Mm -hmm. and foremost. It's just, you know, GPA and GAMSAT. That's all all they're looking at. If if you know you you and apply you and I are both applying to University of Melbourne, what we're going to do is um, submit our scores to the to the university, and they're going to generate one ranking system, one rank for everybody's GPA. So obviously, you know, seven out of tens will be at the top, and it'll go down. Then separately, they're going to create another rank purely for Gamsat, right? Mm. And so everybody's Gamsat again, from from highest to lowest, they're going to rank that. This is what's important. They then generate this final rank called a merged rank. Yeah. And in this merged rank, they will combine what our rankings were for our GPA with our rankings for the GAMSAT to see in total where have we, where have we ranked. Yeah. And you know, if they have a cutoff of say 600 interview students, if you've ranked in the top 1600, I mean, sorry, 600, yeah, yeah. Then, then you've got one. Okay. Yeah. And it makes sense, right? So yeah. 
you know, these computer algorithms don't need a simple mathematical formula. They yeah, yeah, can yeah. actually rank like multiple, they can have different processes that happen at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think part of the reason that the, the combined score, combination score became so popular was because it's so easy to calculate. It's easy. You know, gamma set divided by 100, GPA divided by 7. Yeah. But it doesn't make any sense. No. Um, GPA makes sense because it's just your GPA. Yeah. But Gamsat out of a hundred, like it's not out of a hundred. No, it's um, not. Yeah. yeah. And what what I guess the, the the biggest factor to to try to like really understand what's going on is you think about the Gamsat scores as a as a bell curve, right? So mm. we obviously know we've got the distributions that you know we we get sent yeah. out with the scores. Um, going from say you know a sixty to a sixty five, there is such a high cluster of students within that region mm. that you know you're beating a large amount. So really, your chances are improved a lot. Yeah. going from that 60 to 65. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But so for instance, like if I got um, you know, my 84 back in the day and yeah, yeah, someone yeah. else got a 75, yeah. the number of students in between that is actually quite small. Exactly. So exactly. even though I've moved down 10, yeah. it's like I might have only moved down 20 students. Exactly. Whereas if you if you're in yeah, like you said the 60 mm. to 65, going from 60 to 65, you might have moved, you know, I don't know, 5,000 students. Yeah. Um, probably not that many, but you know, maybe a thousand or two thousand mm. students. But when you convert it into a decimal, yeah, it's like if I got point one higher on my GPA, that's accounts for the whole of that ten point yeah. swing. Yeah, ridiculous. And it also doesn't change. Like if I get seventy five or eighty five or sixty five and fifty five, that math that formula doesn't take into account. No. It's account. just completely linear the whole way through. Yeah, the whole thing's just yeah. linear. It yeah. makes no yeah. sense. Um, you're just adding two distributions mm. together and then spitting out another number and saying that and it's, it's a rank. And the completely, completely like not taking into consideration what, you know, the, the cohort was yeah. that was applying at that given time. Obviously, scores are different. Yeah, exactly, you know, yeah. Increasing number of sits every year for the game set. Yeah, or if for whatever reason, GPA calculations change mm. for a given year, the distribution of scores in different levels will all change. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, mm. I, I guess the bottom line is merge rank is the way it goes. <laughs> merge rank. Um, it is a little annoying though it is it so, is so um so why is it annoying because it's there's no like nice easy maths to just yeah, you chuck in you can't like you know staple like a i'm a 1.71 yeah. you know on your chest yeah. um you have to you have to sort of just again trust that that wherever your rankings lie but mm. we have built something we have um, we have yeah maybe we'll elaborate yeah, a little bit yeah, yeah sure so um obviously we're we're fortunate enough here to have somewhat you know 40 percent of people that were applying yeah for for medicine um going going through us at some stage and so mm. d due to that preparation we'll be able to sit down with our students yeah. and get the scores that they have and through that data we we're able to create these ranks and try yeah. to emulate it so obviously 40 percent is an amazing like sample size yeah, you know yeah it's, I mean? like, it's we've, quite good yeah 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 so so i guess we'll we might save it for another another um episode and yeah, i know you're, sure. you're probably working on another article but yeah yeah um we're working so we did last year we published a um, preferencing machine mm -hmm. so gem sas preferencing machine mm -hmm. it was right before preferencing was coming out and we tried to yeah, use the year before's data yep. to give students an idea of what score roughly they um, need to get into different universities. Mm. So um, Christian put in lots of hard work um, and we worked together to put together, yeah, a, another uh, medical interview offer yep. uh, calculator. Yep, yep. And based on a GAMSAT and a GPA score, you'll be able to see the and portfolio and a portfolio as well you'll be able to see the likelihood of getting an offer at each of the different universities um and it's reverse engineered yeah, so yeah. we we took the data from our students um and all anonymous of course and reverse engineered the process so that you can um test out for yourself and that the distributions which we generated mm. also really um sort of bulk at the combination score because yeah it, like it's non-linear no uh, that's it yeah, that's it yeah. you know like, like we said at every stage where you're changing you know certain increments in gpa yeah. or games that th there's differences their yeah. sensitivities are different yeah for instance like I, I was playing with it and i think for melbourne uni like you could um, move up and down on the scale for uh, gpa and gpa had much less effect than gamsat yeah presumably because melbourne uni this i don't know but maybe the students in melbourne uni just generally have higher gpas mm -hmm. so when you were in that 6.6 .6 bracket it didn't actually make any difference if mm -hmm. you moved up and down because you're again going back to the distribution when you're in that area for melbourne uni it's probably actually quite sparse yeah, yeah you yeah, know yeah. so it didn't make much a difference in terms of where you rank whereas if you moved gams out one you immediately got a hundred percent chance 
Um, so yeah, it, I guess bottom line is it makes sense um, the, that the distribution of both GAMSAT GPA portfolio, whatever else you know in the future might go into an <laughs> application, the, the distribution of those things dictate how likely you are to get an offer, yeah. not just the score. Not the score. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, all right. I think we've, we've covered a lot. So we, yeah. we covered, yeah, the basics of how GAMSAT scores work. We cut it covered the IRT, mm. the merge rank. Um, I think the only other thing that uh, I find students often worry about is sort of needing like a 70 plus, you know, mm. if you see any of past GAMSAT stuff, the like every ad will say you have to get 70 plus mm-hmm. to get in. Um, and like I understand that instinct, you know, mm. it feels like the sort of high performance bar. Um, but what's the maths behind 70 plus like do you actually have to get 70 plus to get a medical interview offer definitely not and you know in every year with the more and more sits we're seeing that you know that it's drawing away from that as as we know the gamset scores are dropping and so yeah. you know but 70 plus you know when we're looking at how many people do get 70 plus in every single sitting and then when we combine that to you know how many people are applying to start yeah. medicine in the new year there are more spots on offer than there are those that got 70 plus. Yeah, exactly. And so, you know, it doesn't take a genius to work out that there are students who got less than 70 <laughs> yeah, who, that have got in. Who yeah. have got in. Yeah. Um, Not to mention portfolio unis. We'll chuck mm. that in and, you know, the, the the need for a higher game set starts diminishing. Exactly, yeah. So I think last, like, I'm not sure about this year gone, but last year it was Notre Dame, sort of their middle game set was 63, 64, and then Wollongong was 59. Mm. Because once you get an interview offer at Wollongong, they don't even consider your game set. I, I would almost argue it's a negative factor. I don't know if yeah. it actually came out as negative in our calculations, but... For GAMSAT? Yeah. It did, surprisingly. So. Yeah. yeah, because um, I think it's not, a, it's not a reflection of them looking at GAMSAT score and saying, mm. we don't want to take the yeah. students who have high scores. I just think generally they curate their cohort to have professionals and people with hu- excellent human achievement yeah. and all these things that by curating these students, generally those students have lower scores. Mm-hmm. So they're probably unknowingly picking for lower GAMSAT yeah. scores. So when you make a calculator that's trying to build a formula to do what is ultimately probably curated, yeah. um, it ends up saying that GAMSAT's a negative predictor. Yeah. So if you're getting a get higher a lower GAMSAT, score, yeah, a higher exactly. chance. Yeah, drop your GAMSAT yeah. down to get, get an <laughs> offer. Yeah, yeah. Um, Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, look, it's, it's inter- like the whole process is kind of interesting. And I think we're year on year getting closer to, um, to, I guess, like taking a proper look inside. Mm, mm. No, I wouldn't say unravel, but um, yeah, reverse engineering yeah. the process yeah, yeah. With, with some confidence. Yeah. Um, Agreed. Great. All right. Well, thank you so much, Christian. It's a pleasure. Um, I think this has been a good episode yeah. on GAMSAT scores and please read the GAMSAT scores <laughs> article. It's long, but yeah. it's good. It's <laughs> worth a read and yeah. we'll have lots of... Um, uh, calculators in there so we'll have mm-hmm. a gpa calculator your medical interview office calculator as well and a bunch of pictures explaining the merge rank system as well um because we're trying to we're trying to change the consensus opinion yeah. here so get people you know, knowing exactly yeah, yeah knowing the merge, merge rank, rank. <laughs> <laughs> um all right thank you so much signing out until next time bye